Okay, we are taking a break from this little project to get started on our third do-it-yourself little generator project. And what we were going to do is one that I've always wanted to work on, the washing machine. Now where can we find a washing machine? Oh, there's one. Okay, now if you look hard enough, or even if you don't look very hard at all, you can find these things on Craigslist and Facebook for cheap or, in the case of this one, for free. The person I got this one from said it didn't drain, and it looks like it didn't drain. Uh, it is pretty gross. Gross. And it has had a lot of repairs done to it. But that doesn't matter. Look at all that goodness. We're going to take it apart and we're going to get the motor off of it. Uh, that's going to be this video is the adventure of taking this thing apart. I don't know what it's going to entail, but I've been told that it is an adventure. So happy watching. Okay, that's the part that we're trying to figure out how to remove. That's our, our motor, and that is what has all of our magnets and coils and all that kind of good stuff in it. I'm looking around, I can also see that this thing is quite a bit of uh, rat presence in it. That's always neat. I like this. Little plastic bags taped to it. I don't know if that's a repair, but there's a, a kitchen rag wrapped around a, a drain pipe. Well, always neat. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Ah. Okay. That's our magnets. Hmm. Okay, I see. This is fixed on the drum. This is attached to the inside drum. The, the coils pull those magnets. Okay. Well, that's not as crazy as I thought it would be. Okay. Some more cutting and hacking and bolting. If you ever need an example as to why you should have a clean workspace, well, this is it. I spend more time looking for tools than I do actually using them. Like right now, I need a 10 millimeter socket. And I know that out here somewhere in my three generations worth of tools and nonsense, there's a dozen of them. But I can't find one because I don't spend any time out here actually straightening stuff up. Might be in there, might be up there, might be in that toolbox, might be on that bench. I really need to clean this stuff up. I'm going to take some time and clean this up. And the desire to just walk out to my, my work van and grab a couple tools from the organized area out there is so strong. But I'm resisting. Oh, there's one. Now where the hell is my drill? I had it in my hand. Oh. There it is.
That's our good stuff. Okay, I think that I have discovered the part that makes this interesting. This is our magnets. And I did expect them to be stronger magnets. They're not very strong, but there's a lot of them. Maybe that makes up the difference. Anyway, so this is going to be the part that has to spin. And it's blind. So the trick is going to be coming up with a way to mount the rotor or yeah we're gonna call this the rotor it is a rotor the other one's a stator we gotta come up with a way to mount the stator to something that still allows the rotor to spin no i think that that's uh that's the tricky bit and really it might be worth making a custom rotor for it but we're going to see if we can find a way to extract the mechanism from the washing machine. Now, the way this works is carrier bearing there, the drum sits on the other side of that. Stator bolts to the outer drum. We gotta figure out a way to, I guess basically what I want is I want this part off and then I want the shaft the bearing assembly we're, we're gonna have to find a way to use this in the turbine so got some more work to do and this is the same kind of washing machine as I have in my house so I'm trying to save any parts that might potentially be useful which, of course, is why my shop looks like this. appears to be the meat of our project. It's something I see now that I've got it all pulled apart. This washing machine had more trouble than just uh, not draining and the leaks that it had. This, this bearing is completely shot. It's missing some balls out of it. And what I think is neat, is that the dust seal was still in place. So, I don't know where the balls went. They didn't fall out on the outside. Maybe we'll see them here in a minute. But what we're looking at is trying to find a way to get this shaft out. It's really snug fit. I'm gonna Try giving it a couple of taps with a brass hammer and see if that'll slide it out. If not, I don't know. Then we're gonna go from there.
I just spent about 45 minutes trying to pull, pry, push, and beat this thing apart and have had no success. I even tried disassembling the bearing on top by grinding a, a slot in it to where I could pull the bearings out, the, the balls out of the bearing, thinking, well, without the balls in it, it'd just slide right out. And this makes perfect sense. It turns out there is a dual bearing, one on either side of this thing that uh, holds the, the two drums together. So even after disassembling that bearing, the other one is still holding it together. Uh, this is a lot of damn work. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to use it. The thought occurred to me after I walked away from it, from it for a few minutes. So I think that all this is just extra work for nothing. So this is our assembly here. This is what we've got to work with. And now, what I think will be better is I'm going to make a plate. Uh, we'll find something simple that we can make it with that we'll be able to mount the stator to. After the stator is mounted to that plate, I'm going to set the plate up with a bearing on the front and the back. We'll use uh, pillow block bearings. They're cheap. Actually, I have one right here. That's covered in magnets. One inch pillow block bearing. Right there, on either side, that's almost exactly the right size. We'll do a pillow block bearing on either side of the plate. Have a shaft, we'll go through it. Shaft, I will probably weld it to the rotor. And then on the other side of it, we'll be able to set it up to attach to our rotor or whatever we're going to drive it with. Well, I think that this is our stopping point for now. I may come over here and beat the living snot out of this thing and see if I can just, uh, you know, beat it into submission. And if I can, we might go ahead and use that shaft just because that would be convenient. But at this point, it's no longer necessary. So that's, that's part one of this. We're gonna be coming back to it soon. And as always, if you guys find this interesting and you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It helps me out and you'll get notifications for all any of the new stuff that I post and I will be following up on all three of these do-it-yourself projects. So that's that. Thanks for watching, guys.